start list what a race this will be Italy lane three they would have perhaps heard the Italian anthem ringing out after the men's pairs across the course but Australia the hot favorites for this race in lane four yeah expecting a uh, another race that could take us to a different level I think in terms of the quality that we've got on display and seeing the sprinting and the power and the pace we've seen in the other races today so we've got this young German crew on lane one they're all 20 or 21 years old they were so brave in the semi where they came through and took the race on um, to qualify for this final Danish crew have been improving really through the season they were ninth in Lucerne and then who knows what we're going to see from these Italians. We've already seen their pair sprinting to a gold medal. All four of these men were in Rio. They all picked up bronze medals, either in the Coxless Four or in the pair. The Australian crew, stroke man Alex Hill, picked up the silver in Rio. This crew won gold in Poznan. And as Sarah says, they very much have come here to win gold. Great Britain traditionally strong in this event, but they've had some ups and downs this season and during this regatta will set restored to the stroke seat having had a health issue that kept him out of the boat for the semi-final and then the netherlands who again can be such inconsistent performers but three of this crew were in rio and picked Germany. up fifth place at the olympics Denmark. so i'm expecting Italy. a very very exciting and All close three. race here Great Britain. The Netherlands. The boat's held securely by the state boat men and women. We're away in the A final of the men's four, and the Italians right onto it there. We've seen their signature really short first stroke, uh, which most of their crews tend to have, which really punches them out of the blocks. Well, the thing that's surprising me is just higher stroke rates. People seem to be going over, taking more strokes per minute. And you see it here from the Italians. All of this aggression, they're still not up at full slide yet, and they must be out through 10, 11, 12 strokes, still not coming up to the full use of the slide. But it is that brave German crew on the far side in lane one in that green boat who've gone out and they thought, we're going to take this on. Paul Gebel, closest to the 21-year-old, coached by uh, Christian Witt and uh, done a great job. German fours, not always the fastest crew. They're in the green boat. Uh, Greg, the question on everyone's minds, you see the British four languishing at the back of the field. Just what will it do to their psychology that Will Satch was out of the boat for the semi-final? Can they possibly hope to compete with the pace of the Australians? Well, Will Satch there, we see him in the stroke seat. Um, I think it won't put them off. I think you have to focus on it. You go one race at a time. And, OK, they're languishing. They're, they've given away 10 metres now. That could start to become a, a bigger gap as the, as the Australians now are getting hold of the race. Yeah, the Australians now in the lead, the fastest moving boat on the course. I think that they'll really look to establish themselves in this early stage before then starting to relax into their rhythm a little more. But, wow, they come through the 500 metre mark, almost half a length up on the rest of the field. Dutch headed their semi-final at 500 metres. That just tells you how quick the Australians are. Coached by Ian Wright, the Kiwi, who took the Swiss lightweight floor to Olympic gold. They dominated that event. This man knows how to coach rowing, and more importantly, he knows how to coach Cox's four rowing. It's Ian Wright against Jürgen Grobler, who's the experienced coach of the British four, and the Australians look beautiful. That is stunning rowing. 43 strokes a minute, and it doesn't look that high, does it? No. Looks really effortless in the Australian crew. In the stroke seat, Alex Hill, three seat, Jack Hargraves, two seat, Spencer Tarrant, and the bow seat, Josh Hicks. But here are the Italians. Will we see the same passion, the same turn of speed that their men's pair had in the second half of their race? Well, to be fair, there's a calmness about that Italian crew, but they won't be calm if they could see this shot, which is that the Australians have continued to move in this second 500 really strongly. So they've stayed up at 42 strokes a minute, and now they've got that little bit of clear water. Just trying to see if I can spot Ian Wright or Jürgen Grobler, those coaches on the bank, the peloton following the race, but what a great shot. Holland in the foreground, Britain in the middle ground, Italy behind the bow of the green boat, lane one Germany, but out in front, there's the yellow empacker, the German shell used by the Australians. They are trucking. Boy, just fluid round the finish. He has this pause paddling that Ian Wright favours. Just take that time, let the boat flow out. So many of the coaches poo-poo it, but he thinks he's got it exactly right. Well, you can see once they're up at pace and 43 strokes a minute, which we saw them at, which I'm not quite sure if they're still there, but it looks quite similar. 
there isn't a pause, so it's there during the paddling, but that's the whole theory, is that once you get up to pace, that it just keeps moving and keeps flowing, and that's what they're doing so well here. You can see Jack Hargraves in the three-seat there. He's been one of the biggest improvers in the Australian men's squad. Well, as you say, you can see they're really loose around the finish. They're really quiet around the finish, so the boat can then get spat out at top speed. They do nothing to slow it down. As we see this lovely shot of their rig with two oars in the middle uh, on one side, uh, we call that, um, I guess, I guess putting in a, a bucket or a tandem. And what that does is help the boat just go a little bit straighter. But, Greg, you know, Ian Wright with these four Australians, OK, so he had Hill and Turret from the Olympics, but Hill... Hicks and Hargreaves. I mean, he said, I just had four guys. I had to throw them together. There was really nobody to make a four. And this man has come out and he has got four world beaters. They are destroying the rest of the world, including the might of the Britain. Will Satch there, Matt Tarrant, his parents watching in the stands, the bald head of Mo Sabihi, and then behind him in the bow seat, Matty Roster, the 28-year-old. And the British are trying to respond to this move. They're trying to get back into it. And they, they've probably pushed themselves up into the medals. And the Australians here, as we see them from above, just looking fantastic. It's really interesting you're talking about the, the rig there, because I don't think I've ever seen so many crews that have a tandem rig. Five out of the six crews, the Germans are the only crew with a conventional rig. Uh, but all of the crews with that tandem rig in the middle of the boat. Well, it's a little bit of physics, isn't it? It just helps the forces be evenly distributed to make the boat go down the centre of the lane. Great. Is Ian Wright the world's most valuable coach? We've seen what he's done to the Swiss in the Olympics. He won by over clear water. We've seen what he's done to the Australians in Poznan, where they beat the British here, where they look to be on course for beating the British. He knows how to get his men to move a boat. Has he got the answers that others lack? Well, today the, uh, the coaching battle is going on. The Australians are winning it. I'm just seeing here the Italians have made this big move up to 44 strokes a minute. They're going to want to step on their speed. It could push them ahead of the British, but um, the Australians are well out. Pain on the face of the bowman, the 28-year-old Matt Roster in the British boat as they see the Italians go past them. The Italians have now got half a length. They're after the Australians. There's about 200 metres left, 250 metres. I think that's a winning margin for the Australians, but... Don't be surprised if the Italians go right back. There is Domenico Montroni, the stroke of the Italian boat, the man from Bari winding the rate up. They're up at 46 strokes a minute, and they're eating up the lead of the Australians. We saw this in the men's pair when they took the Croatians. Anything could happen, but I think the Australians have done enough to stay safe. But the British, they're on the wrong side of this. The and British are trying to come back. The Netherlands are also out of your shot. I don't think they're going to come in in lane six and challenge for the bronze medal. The Italians have now got an overlap with the Australians, but I think the Australians have enough coming down to the line. Matteo Lotto in the three seat, just heaving it with the yellow sunglasses. Aussie take the gold medal, fantastic performance Italy takes silver Britain disappointed with bronze Netherlands take fourth the Danes come in fifth that's a massive improvement for their season the young Germans off the back but delighted to be in the final but they know this is a performance to savor these four men from Australia Sarah Cook you must be delighted watching that yeah incredible you can see Josh Hicks there from Sydney Rowing Club his hands go up what a comeback that was from the Italians, up to 46 strokes a minute to get themselves into the silver medal position. Great Britain, I imagine, very disappointed with that bronze medal. But the Australians, I mean, they were dominant all the way down the course. That was a really spectacular display of, of full rowing. You called that, Sarah. I was possibly hoping that it was going to be a closer race, but that Australian crew, absolutely dominant. Um, really, from, from 100 metres in, they got control of it and just kept moving. Greg, when was the last time that Jürgen Grobler's top boat, the British chief coach, had to settle for a bronze medal? A bronze medal is an interesting one, often inconsistent in early season, but Jürgen Grobler is very good at bringing it together for the World Championships. Uh, the crews, as I've experienced, go away for such a tough training program between Lucerne Regatta um, and then have immaculate preparation for the World Championships um, that you expect to see them step on when it really matters but it's not worked today. And uh, in Australia it's currently 1.30 in the morning and I've had a message from some of the boys from Sydney University Boat Club who are standing out the front of a pub back home in Sydney who've just watched their uh, clubman Jack Hargraves in the three-seat of that Australian men's four take the World Championship. That, that's wonderful, Sarah. I've just had a message from Melbourne University Boat Club watching in Australia to say, could you get that Sarah Cook and Sydney University presence off the screen? <laughs> <laughs> They'll be loving it too. We're all green and gold where it counts. So the medal ceremony for the lightweight women's double skulls 
you can hear the fanfare. Confirmation of that result. Do you want to give it, Sarah? Yes, Australia. First World Championship title in 26 years in the men's four. The victory, Sarah. 550 